Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about room modes. It seems like we're always talking about room modes, but people still don't really understand how powerful they are and how we need to deal with them in a room. So today we're going to talk about locations. And we know that depending on what we're doing in the room, the problems can be minimal or they can be exaggerated. So it's always dependent on what you're doing in the room. If you're in a big auditorium and you're having a conversation with somebody, just two people, it's way different than if there's 200 people and a band playing on stage. So it's all about what you're doing in the room. It's all about the amount of energy that you're putting in the room. It's all about the size and the volume of the room because the room size and volume tells you how much pressure it will handle and that pressure tells you how what you can do in the room so we can't really a lot of people say well i want to do this i want to do that in the room i want to have this or that in the room and a lot of times i tell them you can't and they get a little upset they say well it's my room i can do with what you want true that's true but if you really want to get quality sound, we have to let the room tell us what to do. We have to let the size of the room tell us what the sound quality is going to be. We have to let the volume of the room, the length, width, and the height, tell us what's going to, what's going to be done in that room. Because certain sizes, certain volumes, are good for certain usages. And we kind of got to push our ego aside and let the room tell us what we need. So. We know our problems have two main issues, frequency and amplitude. Frequency is measured in hertz, okay? Amplitude is the strength of that hertz, basically, okay? So we know that axial modes from past videos are the strongest. Now those are the modes between two parallel surfaces. So if we have our room here, I know it's square, don't get upset. We're using this for purposes of illustration. I know square rooms are not good, but axial modes are the modes between two parallel surfaces. So it could be side wall, side wall. It could be front wall, rear wall. Two parallel surfaces. They're the strongest. Okay. So if our room is small, and we want to play drums, we know that the pressure, especially the low frequency pressure, between these two parallel surfaces is going to be the greatest. Okay, so tangential is the next one, which is four walls. I don't quite know how to draw that, but you know what I mean. And then oblique is six planes, floor, ceiling, and the four side walls. They're the least troublesome, the least powerful. And what we're going to talk about in future videos is that if we treat the axial modes, they have a direct impact on tangential, and the tangential have a way bigger impact on oblique. So really when we're focusing our treatments, we look at these two. This one, not so much, because if we treat these two, if we treat this one well, this one falls in place, and this one falls in place. So we got to go after this big elephant here. So it's the pressure between two parallel surfaces that we have to get. What does the room response look like in a small room? If this is 100 cycles, you always have this big dip, and then we have this, or big peak, and then we have the dip, and then we flatten out, we get back to normal, okay, baseline. Let's get rid of this. It, it goes more like this in small rooms. So we have this huge peak. This could be plus 13 dB SPL. I've seen plus 16 dB SPL at 30 cycles. Okay, so if we attenuate this peak and we start taking parts of it off, what happens is this starts to go up because this is the fundamental, this is the harmonic. So we always have to go after these axials because they're the biggest peak, okay? Now, here's a lot of confusion right here. 
what do I use to treat this? People say, well, I want to get some foam. Well, that's like holding up a feather to stop a tornado. Because foam doesn't even start working to right here and moving forward here. So it doesn't even do anything here. But a lot of the businesses or a lot of the companies out there try to sell you foam to treat low frequency pressure issues. It's nonsense. Don't believe it. Definitely don't buy it. You have to use technology that treats the problem. Now here's the next thing. Once we figure out what technology you use to treat the problem, we have to apply it to the offending surface area within the room. So stay with the axils. Let's say we have sidewall, sidewall problems. Our low frequency absorption has to go here. And here's another thing we have to keep in mind. This is 12 to 16 inches of space requirement. So to treat this, we have to do this to our room. Okay, not just a little two inch foam. We have to use foam and low frequency absorption. What's our three forms? Hemholtz, diaphragmatic, and membrane. We use diaphragmatic because it's the most powerful. So we have to realize that, oh, we have these big problems. They're located on the sidewall and we got to give up 12 inches to 16 inches of space. So if we got a, a 16 foot sidewall dimension, we're really going to be at 14 because we're going to use a foot and a foot to treat. So the bottom line here is we got to match the treatment to the usage, to the pressure, to the size and the volume. Okay. And this is not the answer. It has its place, but its place is here in the frequency response curve, not here. So if we get this managed correctly, we're in good shape. Alrighty, hope that helps clear things up. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.